What we need to do is change our entire relationship to the, the design and to the machine to understand that we need to obey nature's laws. What are nature's laws? Waste equals food. We have to eliminate the concept of waste. This is not minimize waste. It's eliminate the entire concept, put things to closed cycles. Respect diversity. Nature grows niches. Use current solar income. The idea of using current solar income is very simply uh, our economy, the flows that are engaged on a planetary surface. The additive thing that makes our system grow is the sun. It's the one thing that's added to the system. It makes things grow. Nature does it with sunlight. Humans can too. At Oberlin College in northeastern Ohio, the buildings, like most other modern structures, were designed without much connection to the natural world. The way we designed buildings in the industrial era was to make them very machine-like. So you, you didn't pay much attention to how the building was oriented. When energy was cheap, you could design like that. We can't do that anymore. Climate change, oil spills, acid rain, we now live in a very different kind of world. Oberlin students had a lot of questions particularly in David Orr's environmental studies classes. What was the future their education was preparing them for? We've been headed down a road which has been very destructive, which is focused on, you know, consumerism and consumption and commodifying our environment, and has put us in a situation that's pretty desperate, and it's time that we need to really change how things have been going so far. The students' concerns reflected a fundamental contradiction at the heart of their educational experience, one that troubled Bill McDonough as well. If we look at Emerson again in 1831, after his wife dies, he goes to Europe on a sailboat and he returns in a steamship. Now, if we abstract this for effect, he went over on a solar-powered, recyclable craft operated by craftspeople practicing ancient arts in the open air and returned in a steel rust bucket, putting smoke in the sky, oil on the water, operated by people working in the darkness, shoveling fossil fuels in the mouths of boilers. Now, this is design. The terrifying thing is we're still designing steamships. We're in one right now. We are in the dark, shoveling fossil fuels in the mouths of boilers while we talk to each other. It's time for new design. For David Orr, the challenge was to not only teach his students environmental theory, but to give them a way to experience sustainable design. Can you design a building in such a way that it becomes in its design and maintenance and operation pedagogical? It's where the edge occurs as most of the life is going on, edge of water and, and earth. At their Charlottesville office, Bill McDonough and his partners were struggling to rethink the whole concept of a building's relationship to nature. How sophisticated is human design? Imagine a building like a tree. Imagine being able to go out in a meadow and building something that starts to make oxygen, sequester carbon, fix nitrogen, create microclimates, provide habitat for hundreds of species, accrue solar energy as fuel, make complex sugars and food, change color with the seasons, build soil, and self-replicate. Oberlin's Adam Lewis Center for Environmental Studies is a model for an emerging new relationship between the built environment and the natural world. It provides a place where the surroundings in which a class is taught are as important as the course content. Like the tree that is its model, it is powered by sunlight, energy efficient design, geothermal wells, raised floors, building orientation, day lighting, and rooftop photovoltaic panels allow the building to produce more energy than it consumes. The building uses sustainably harvested wood and non-toxic furnishings. The landscape will be a microcosm of the hardwood forests and woodland ponds of northern Ohio. The building cleans its own wastewater by means of a living machine designed by John Todd. Maintained and operated by students, the living machine replicates and accelerates the natural purification processes of ponds and marshes. One of the students who monitor the living machine is James McConaughey, 
After exposure to pesticides while in elementary school, James developed chronic multiple chemical sensitivities. When I found this building, when I heard about this being built, this is, this is safer for me than my dorm room is. Um, I'm really at home there and I really feel comfortable there. And I think that if this becomes a norm, um, rather than some kind of a gimmick, I think that's wonderful. The building has become a magnet for the Oberlin College community. In September of 2000, the Adam Lewis Center was formally dedicated. A revolution in materials, products of service, certified wood, non-toxic materials. This is about starting a revolution. Hearing the speakers during the, um, the dedication of this building gave me a lot of hope. Everything we thought to be true will be turned on its head. These are people who have the money and have the resources, but they also have a lot of knowledge and the desire to, to use those resources to make a change. What we're looking for is fecundity here. We're looking for children. Uh, we're looking for excitement. We're looking to be generative, not just less bad. Being less bad is not being good. It's just being less bad. So the question I think we'd have to ask here is that if 5,000 years from now, an extraterrestrial came to Oberlin and said, could you show me as a sign of extreme human hopefulness? All the people here will be able to say, we can show you where it is.